amen. It's times like these, amen, when it's difficult or costly to praise God. And that's what a sacrifice of praise means, amen. It requires us to wholly submit ourselves, amen, on the altar to the will of God, even though we may not understand his ways. Why is this happening? Why am I going through this here? Through such a sacrifice of praise, is at times like that that we confess that God is still good. And he can still be trusted. Although things do not seem to be working our way. See, I'm reminded of Isaiah 55, 8 and 9 where he says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways. And my thoughts than your thoughts. You see, knowing his ways and thoughts are holy. And infinitely better than ours? If God didn't grant it, then it's for our own good not to have it. And that way I can still praise God in the middle of it. Let me say it again. The Amplified Classic Bible says, Through him, therefore, let us constantly, somebody say constantly, let us constantly and at all times, what part of that do we not understand? Let us constantly and at all times, even in the middle of your troubles and sorrows, let us constantly and at all times offer up to a sacrifice of praise to God. That's why King David said in Psalms 34 and 1, I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praise shall continue to be in my mouth. See, it's one thing to be able to quote it, but it's a whole other thing to be able to do it. It's a whole other thing to be able to praise God even in the midst of your situation, in the midst of your troubles, in the midst of your problems. I wish I had a real church today that knew how to praise God. The old church knew how to praise God, but the new church is a little bit, a little bit more sedated than the old church. But David said, I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praise shall continue to be in my mouth. He said, my soul shall make a boast in the Lord, and the humble shall hear thereof and be glad. And then he turned and said, oh man, Magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. David was saying, not only do I want to praise him and bless his name, but I want you to exalt and bless his name as well. And that's the way I feel this morning. I can praise God. I can bless his name. But it's so much better when we all come together as children of God and exalt his name together. David said this because praise is the expression of approval or admiration for someone or something. Now let me try it again. Praise is to declare enthusiastic approval of. Somebody still missed that because enthusiastic means having or showing intense and eager enjoyment. Well, let me help somebody out. Because I remember the early church. Somebody say back in the day. Back in the day, every now and again, somebody will start singing something like, I don't know what you come to do. I come to praise the Lord. I come to praise the Lord. I don't know what you come to do. I come to praise the Lord. I come to bless his name. I come to lift him up. I come to clap my hands. I come to stomp my feet. I come to shout for joy. I don't know what you come to do. But I come to praise his name. Amen. You see, that was the old church. That's where we come from. That's where my roots originated from. I remember when the saints would look at you and look at somebody beside them, and I'm going to look at y'all that way. I don't know what y'all come to do, but I come to praise the Lord. I come to bless his name. I come to clap my hands and shout. I come to dance today. I come because I am enthusiastic about what God has done. I'm enthusiastic about what God is doing, and I'm enthusiastic about what God is going to do. Regardless of what's going on in my life right now, regardless of how I feel right now, I'm going to offer up a sacrifice. Sacrifice means something that you got to give up. 
and give it to God. Are you with me today? Can I go a little further? Listen to Peter. Peter said in 1 Peter 2 and 9. He said, but you are a chosen generation. You're a royal priesthood. I'm talking to the saints of God now. He said, you're a chosen generation. You're a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people. In other words, when people come in from the outside, you look peculiar to them. If they see you praising God, shout, see, see, listen, let me, can I say it like this here? See, see, God expects the saints to praise him. He expects that. Others are welcome to. But he expects us to. That's why Peter say, Peter was saying it in a way like this here. Don't you understand that you are a chosen generation? You're a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people. Watch this. That you should show that you should do something. That you should show forth the praises of him who have called you out of darkness into the marvelous light. Somebody get somebody picking up on it right now. It's taking some of y'all a little while, but some of y'all picking up on it. He said he has called you out of darkness into the marvelous light. Once you was blind, but now you can see. Once you was lost, but now you see. He said you are chosen. You are peculiar. You're a royal priesthood. Watch this here. Watch this here. People of God shouldn't have to wait on the pastor to tell you to praise God. Y'all ought to be out praising me. Y'all ought to actually be a little bit louder than I am, although I got a mic. Because it's more of you than it is of me. But he was basically saying, you should show forth the praises of him because he called you out of door. You could have still been lost in your sins. You could have still been running around out there like some fools out there today. Do y'all hear me? Still in darkness. Ain't praising God. Ain't thanking God. Ain't showing no respect to God. But he said, but you're a chosen generation. Watch this. He said, he went on to say, he said, Jesus said, you didn't choose me. I chose you. And for that right there ought to have been enough to make somebody praise God. He said, you didn't choose me. I chose you. Ain't that something? You special. Not only that there, he said, you are a chosen generation, a group of people, a royal priesthood, a peculiar people. And I like being peculiar. But you know what peculiar mean? Mean you different. You different. You don't look like the world look. Amen. Because he brought you out of the world. He brought you out of darkness into the marvelous light. I might as well read verse 10 of that. Watch what he say. In verse 10 he say, which in time past you were not a people like that. He said, but you are now the people of God. See, which in time past, you were lost and just as crazy as some of the rest of the crazy ones out there. He said, but now, look at it, but, but are now, but are now, but are now the people of God, which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. It was because of God's grace and mercy that you are sitting in here this morning. It's because of his grace and mercy that you woke up this morning. It's because of his grace and mercy that you was able to put your clothes on this morning. It's because of his grace and mercy that you woke up in your right mind this morning. It's because of his grace and mercy that you didn't die out there in that car wreck some years ago. That you didn't die out there as an alcoholic or a drug addict. It's because of his grace and mercy that somebody might have tried to put something in your drink. You could have lost your mind. And he said, because of that, you should show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into the marvelous light. But you know what? Here, here, here's a problem with a lot of church folk. Here's a problem with a lot of church folk. Some church folk ain't going to praise God because they don't want to look out of place. We're too cute. Uh, we we dignitaries. Uh, we're too proud. And some of you won't praise God unless somebody's sitting beside you praising God. Oh, y'all ain't getting that down. If they ain't praising, you ain't going to praise. When they clap, then you want to clap. When they stand up, then you want to stand up. 
I stopped by to tell somebody, sometime you got to learn to thank on your own. You got to learn to praise God on your own. Can I go a little further? Psalms 15 and 23, I said I wouldn't be before you long. Psalms 15 and 23 from the Amplified Bible says, He who offers a sacrifice of praise, get it now, He who offers a sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving honors me. Now you want to honor God? Offer a sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. You, you with me this morning? Look at 2 Samuel 22 and 4 says, I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. Oh, I, I, I love this. I don't know about y'all. I may be by myself. But he said, so shall I. He said, watch this. Let me, let me, let me say that again because we're getting ready to go to 2 Chronicles 20. Go ahead and pull up 2 Chronicles 20 because we're going to read something. Listen to what Samuel said again. I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. Watch this. So shall I be saved from my enemies. Let me read it again so you'll get it. I will, I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from my enemies. Okay, all right. I want her to go to Second Chronicles 20 because I want you to see something. Now, y'all, we're going to read this here. We're going to read a lot of verses, and then we're going to be about finished. Watch this here. It came to pass after this also that the children of Moab and the children of Ammon and with them others beside the Ammonites came against Jehoshaphat to battle. Y'all with me? All right. Then there came some, watch this here, that told Jehoshaphat, saying, There cometh a great multitude against thee from beyond the sea. On this side Syria, and behold, they be in Hazazim, Tamar, which is Ungedi. And Jehoshaphat feared. Now remember what Samuel said. When you offer sacrifice of praise to God who's worthy to be praised, he can even deliver you from your enemies. Watch it. They come in at Jehoshaphat and his people. A big group of them. And Jehoshaphat feared. He's the king. And set himself to seek the Lord. And proclaim the fast throughout all Judah. Come on. And Judah gathered themselves together to ask help of the Lord. Even out of all the cities of Judah they came to seek the Lord. And Jehoshaphat stood in the congregation of Judah and Jerusalem in the house of the Lord before the new court. I'm speeding it up. Well, I'm not teaching on every scripture because I'm trying to get somewhere. And said, O Lord God of our fathers, art not thou God in heaven? And rulest not thou over all the kingdoms of the heathens? And in thine hand is there not power and might so that none is able to withstand thee? Art not thou our God who didst drive out the inhabitants of this land before thy people Israel and gavest it to the seed of Abraham thy friend forever? And they dwelt therein and have built thee a sanctuary therein for thy name, saying, If when evil cometh upon us as a sword, judgment, a pestilence, a famine, we stand before this house and in thy presence, for thy name is in this house, and cry unto thee in our affliction, then thou wilt hear and help. And now behold, the children of Ammon and Moab and Mount Seir, whom thou wouldest not let Israel invade when they came out of the land of Egypt, but they turned from them and destroyed them not, Behold, I say now, I say how they reward us to come to cast us out of thy possession which thou hast given us to inherit. O oh, our God, wilt thou not judge them? For we have no might against this great company that cometh against us. Get it? We can't handle them. Neither know we what to do, but our eyes are upon thee. And all Judah stood before the Lord with their little ones, their wives, and their children. Then upon Jehazel, the son of Zechariah, the son of Benaiah, the son of Jeel, the son of Malataniah, a Levite of the sons of Asaph, 
came the spirit of the Lord in the midst of the congregation. And he said, hearken ye or listen ye all Judah and your inhabitants of Jerusalem and thou King Jehoshaphat. Thus saith the Lord unto you, be not afraid nor dismayed by reason of this great multitude for the battle is not yours but God's. Okay, we ain't through yet. Watch this. Tomorrow go ye down against them. Behold, they come up by the cliff of Ziz, and you shall find them at the end of the brook before the wilderness of Jerusalem. What are we talking about? Praising God. And we're still on the page. All right, come on, watch this. You shall not need to fight in this battle. What? Set yourselves. Stand you still and see the salvation of the Lord with you, O Judah and Jerusalem. Fear not, nor be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them, for the Lord will be with you. And Jehoshaphat bowed his head with his face to the ground, and all Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem fell before the Lord, worshiping the Lord. We're going somewhere. And the Levites of the children of the Kohathites and of the children of the Kohites stood up to praise the Lord God of Israel with a loud voice on high. And they rose early in the morning and went forth into the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went forth, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, and you inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God, so shall you be established. Believe his prophets, so shall you prosper. And when he had consulted with the people, he appointed singers unto the Lord. That they, what? I can't hear y'all. That they should praise the beauty of holiness as they went out before the army and to say, Praise the Lord for his mercy endures forever. Come on. And when they began to sing and to praise, y'all ain't hearing me this morning. Y'all ain't picking me up yet. And when they began to sing and to praise, the Lord said, against the children of Ammon, Moab, Mount Seir, which will come against Judah, and they were smitten. For the children of Ammon and Moab stood up against the inhabitants of Mount Seir, utterly to slay and to destroy them. And when they had made an end of the inhabitants of Seir, everyone helped to destroy another. And when Judah came toward the watchtower in the wilderness, they looked unto the multitude, and behold, there were dead bodies fallen to the earth, and none of them escaped. And when Jehoshaphat and his people came to take away the spoil of them, they found among them in abundance both riches with the dead, bodies, and precious jewels, which they stripped off of themselves more than they could carry away. And they were three days in gathering of the spoil. It was so much... And on the fourth day they assembled themselves in the valley of Baraka, for there they blessed the Lord. Therefore the name of the same place was called the valley of Baraka unto this day. Then they returned every man of Judah and Jerusalem and Jehoshaphat in the forefront of them to go again to Jerusalem with joy. For the Lord had made them to rejoice over their enemies, and they came to Jerusalem with psalters and harps and trumpets unto the house of the Lord, and the fear of God was on all the kingdoms of those countries when they had heard that the Lord fought against the enemies of Israel, so the realm of Jehoshaphat was quiet, for his God gave him rest round about. Did y'all get that this morning? Did y'all see that now? Watch this here. When they began to praise God, when they began to praise God, God stepped down. I wish I had some help. Came down and destroyed their enemies, and they didn't even have to lift a finger. All they had to do was lift up holy voices in the beauty of holiness and praise God, and he destroyed their enemies and blessed them afterwards. See, I don't know about you. But I know I got a few enemies. And you mean to tell me that sometimes all I got to do is praise God and be delivered from some of my enemies? And now you know I know why come you find it so hard to praise God? Because the devil don't want you to praise God. The devil don't want you to open your mouth. 
Because the devil wants you to sit quiet and don't say nothing and allow your enemy to overtake you. I wish I had some help. Watch this here. I'm almost finished. Better get with me because I'm about done. We oftentimes say, when praises go up, blessings come down. Am I right about it? Well, my friend, Pastor Marvin Banks, God bless you, Pastor, First Lady. But Pastor Marvin Banks preached a message right here some years ago where he said it like this. When praises go up, the blesser comes down. Oh, y'all didn't get that. When praises go up, the blesser comes down. When praises go up, God steps down. Ain't that what just happened right there? Ain't that what happened with Jehoshaphat? When the praises went up, God came down and said, you ain't even going to have to fight this battle. He said, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. That's why I always say about my enemies, you just keep praising God. Keep blessing God. And at the while, watch this, at the while they'll turn on each other and they'll begin to destroy each other. For that, you ought to say, thank you, Jesus. Praise his name. Bless his name. He's worthy to be praised. When praises go up, the blessing comes down. Watch this. Watch this. You see, you got to offer up a sacrifice of praise. Even when all hell is breaking loose in your life and you don't feel like it. I wish I had some help today. Amen. He said, enter into his gates with thanksgiving and open his courts with praise. Every time you come through those doors, you ought to be thanking God and praising God when you're able to come through those doors. Amen. Praise the Lord. You see, you got to learn how to praise God anyway. Look at your neighbor and say, praise God anyway. Praise him anyway. Even when you don't feel like it, praise him anyway. Oh, I know I'm tired. I didn't get much sleep last night. Praise God anyway. Well, we just sung a while ago. I don't know what you come to do. <laughs> you might have come to warm that seat, but I come to praise God. I come to lift him up. I come to bless his name. Because I know God has been good to me. That's why you ought to just praise God anyway. Oh, we, we, we almost finished, but we still going somewhere. Watch this here. Come Watch this here. Watch this here. Y'all remember this here? Y'all remember this here? Come on and praise the Lord with me. 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 Singing high. Come on and bless the Lord with me. Come on and bless the Lord with me. Come on and bless the Lord with me. Come on and praise the Lord with me. Hallelujah. I might say, but well, that don't really sound that good. They need some music or something to, to enhance it. But we're not trying to praise God just because of music. We praising God anyway. Amen. I don't have to have music to praise God. I don't have to have somebody else around me to praise God. I don't have to have one person to stand up on my seat for me to stand up and praise God. Amen. I'm going to praise God if I had to praise him all by myself. Am I right about it? Am I right about it? Come on and praise the Lord. You see, praising God, watch this, praising God involves the recognition of who he is. He's almighty God. The Alpha and the Omega. The first and the last. The beginning and the end. He's Jehovah Rapha, the Lord who heals. He's Jehovah Nisa, the Lord our banner. He's Jehovah Jireh, the Lord who provides. That's why every now and then you hear somebody say, I get joy when I think about what it does I get joy when I think about what it does I get joy when I think about I get joy when I think about 
and then somebody say, what he's done, what he's done, what he's done, what he's done, I get joy, I get joy, amen, you see, you see, you ought to get some joy out of just looking back at the past, as Peter said, the one that brought you out of darkness into the marvelous light. If he don't do anything else for me, he's done enough already. He saved my soul. He brought me out of darkness into the marvelous light. He took the taste of alcohol out my mouth. I don't smoke cigarettes and drugs no more. I don't have a desire to do that. I don't run around on my wife. I don't have a desire to do that now. I don't cuss and carry on with the fellows no more because he brought me out of it. And I thank God for that. Amen. Because many times the things that I've tried not to do, I only found myself going right back, doing the same things. But when Jesus came into my life, when I got saved, when I got filled with the Holy Ghost, when he brought me out of darkness into the marvelous light, what I couldn't see then, I can see clearly now. And I thank God. I thank God. So when you see me praising him, don't worry about looking at me like something wrong with me. I just know where he brought me from. I know what he's done for me. You might see me in an assembly and you might say, why are you standing up over there? Well, if only you knew like I knew. If you knew like I knew where he brought me from, oh, I wish I had some help. See, some people have a tendency to forget what God delivered them from, what God brought them out of. But we should never forget what the Lord has done for us, where he brought us from. Ain't that all right? That's all right with me. I thank God for it. Amen. I'm going to praise him. Somebody say, I'll praise him if I had to praise him all by myself. Somebody say, I'll go if I have to go all by myself. And you see in these days and times now, it kind of has a tendency to look like that, that you got to go all by yourself. But I stopped by to tell somebody, our Lord and Savior is coming back one day. And if he can only find someone is being so faithful, oh, faithful to the church, faithful Faithful to God, faithful to the people of God, faithful to praise Him. Oh, I wish I had some help today. I love the Lord, y'all. I said I love the Lord, and I'm going to praise Him anyway. Now as I get ready to close, come on, go with me to Psalms 150, and we'll, we'll get out of here on that. And I wish I had a whole bunch of instruments this morning, but we done took them all out because we're getting ready for some work after church. Amen. So y'all go ahead and do the best you can on those tambourines over there. Is that all right, everybody? But listen to Psalms 150. He says, praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. That's here. That's in the church. Praise him in the firmament of his power because he's all powerful. Praise him for his mighty acts, the things that he's done. He's the creator. He created everything. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Thou art great, almighty God. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Y'all can use the tambourines today, amen. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the psalter and the harp. Praise him with the temple and dance. Praise him with the string instruments and the guard. Praise him upon the loud cymbals. Praise him upon the high sounding cymbals. Here it go. This is what I like. Let everything that hath breath praise Jesus Lord. Let everything. Lord says here, let everything, let everybody that hath breath praise you the Lord. Come on. Come on. Do it. Come on. Come on. Let's do a little self checkup. Come on. Do this here. You feel it? Come on, breathe in. Ain't nobody dead in here, is there? He said, well, let everything, let everything that has bread praise ye the Lord. If you're living, you ought to praise him. If you're breathing, you ought to praise him. You could have woke up this morning in the hospital. If you're breathing, you ought to just say, thank you, Jesus. Glory to your name. Somebody say, hallelujah is the highest praise that you can give him. Somebody ought to shout, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now come on and praise him. Come on and bless his name. Come on and get up off your seat and praise him. Come on, get up off your seat. Get up there, sister. Get up. Get up. Get up, I bet if we well, get up, I don't want to be crazy in here, but get up, we can stand up and praise God. Ain't nobody in here too tired that they can't stand up 
and praise God. Amen. If we can stand up to walk and get in the car, God bless us with. We can stand up in the sanctuary and give him some praise. Oh, come on and bless his name. Come on and shout hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. Now watch this. Watch this. I don't mean to bust no bubbles, but the devil can praise God. Anybody can shout. But a praise got to come from in here. It's got to come from your heart. It's got to come from on the inside because of who God is. Now let me hear somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Give him praise. Come on and bless his name. Praise him anyway. Give him a sacrifice of praise. My back hurt. My leg hurt. I had to lay down to paint them boards. I couldn't even get on my knees. My wife had to rub me down, put a heat pad on me. But I still am able to stand up and praise God. I still will shout and praise God. I'll even jump a little bit to praise Him. Come on, somebody. Give Him some praise anyway. Because if it had not been for the Lord on our side, I wish I had some help. Many of us would have been dead a long time ago. But it was because of the Lord. Some of us would have lost our man a long time ago. If it had not been for the Lord who was on our side. Now as I leave, come on and bless his name again. You can't praise him too much. You can't praise him too much. You can't bless his name too much. You can't give him glory too much. Because he's been too good. Too good. Somebody say when you were trying to go to sleep at night, count your blessings. You can't count your blessings. God has been too good to us. Too good. Somebody say God is good. And all the time. So praise him. Bless his holy name. Bless his holy name. Give him glory. Give him glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We stand and we stand and we stand. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we find a lot of things to get excited about. We get excited about football games, basketball games. We go to a game and one of our kids or grandkids is uh, getting a touchdown or uh, uh, maybe a home run or something. Nobody had to tell us to praise God. Nobody has to tell us to get up and shout and get excited about it. But if we can get excited about that, Lord God, we ought to get excited ten times more about you. Peter reminded us, Lord, that we are peculiar people. Everybody ain't going to understand when we shout and praise God. Eh? What's wrong with them dying there? Well, you just don't know like they know what God has done for them. And they remember to give him praise and thanks for what he has done for them. That's why they act like that. They're peculiar people. They're not the same anymore. They're a royal priesthood, a chosen generation. And we offer praise to the one who has brought us out of darkness and to the marvelous light. And we thank you today, Lord God. You didn't have to do it. You didn't have to touch our hearts and minds like you did. But you did. You didn't have to give us a man to come to church today. We could have stayed in the bed, stayed on the couch, watched the game, watched the draft. We could have just rested in and say, well, I worked all week. I'm tired. Like so many do. But we could have got up and said, I ain't going down there around him. I don't want to be around him. But why do we not want to be in your house? Why would we not want to be around the people of God? Why would we not put you first? You said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto thee. So, Lord, we come not for show, but we come to praise you. Teach us, Lord. Help us, Lord God, to remember who we are, to remember who you are, to remember what all you have done for us, to remember that some of us could have been dead 20, 30, 40, 50 years ago. Some of us got into some stuff, Lord God, but you brought us out. Some of us didn't make it. Some of them did, Lord God. Some of them didn't do half the things that we did, and they're not here to praise you. Lord, you also said in your word that the dead can't praise you. So we're alive. And we thank you for that, Lord God. Bless us today and help us to bless your name. 
Help us to always remember whatever the situation is. Help us to always know that all things work together for the good of those that love you and those who are called according to your purposes. Help us to remember that if you be for us, who can be against us? Help us to remember that we do have the victory. Help us to remember that, Lord God, and to give you praise and glory for it, Lord God. And we just thank you right now. Thank you, Father. Bless your people, Lord. Bless everyone under the sound of my voice, Lord. I know sometimes, Lord God, we kind of like a, a old cold car, old cold truck. Sometimes we just had to pump the gas and pump the gas and till it crank up, and then we got to rev it up and rev it up. And once it get to running, then we okay. And sometimes that's what it takes, Lord. It takes us to get revved up, Lord God. But help us to get revved up and stay revved up, Lord God, when we think about all that you have done for us. Lord God, our children could be dead sleeping in their grave, Lord God. They may not be where we want them to be. They may be doing some stuff to get on our last nerve. But that in itself was enough for us to praise you, Lord God. We thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father God. And forgive us, Father God, where we slack when it comes to praising you. Forgive us, Father God. Help us to see the light, Lord God. Help us to go back down memory lane every now and then and just look at all that you've done for us, Lord. Why should we not offer you a sacrifice of praise? And we thank you for it right now. Bless our going out and our coming in. Bless each and every one as they depart one from another, but never from your presence, Lord God. Again, Father God, we pray that all will go well this afternoon and the moving of the furniture. And Father God, we pray that some people will come, but if they don't come, Lord God, we know that you're going to work it out. You already got it worked out, Lord God. We're trying to figure it out. And help us to not hurt ourselves, Lord God. And we'll give you the glory in all things. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And amen. God bless you. God bless you.